There was an interesting connection between the rise of fascism in Europe and the consciousness of politically radical people about corporate power, uh, because there was a recognition that fascism rose in Europe with the help of enormous corporations. Mussolini was greatly admired all across the spectrum. Business loved him. Investment shot up. And suddenly when Hitler came in in Germany, the same thing happened there. Investment shot up in Germany. He had the workforce under control. He was getting rid of dangerous left-wing elements. Investment opportunities were improving. There was no problems. These are wonderful countries. I think one of the greatest untold stories of the 20th century is the collusion between corporations, especially in America, and Nazi Germany. First, in terms of how the corporations from America helped to essentially rebuild Germany and support the early Nazi regime. And then, when the war broke out, figured out a way to keep everything going. So General Motors was able to keep Opel going, Ford was able to keep their thing going, and companies like Coca-Cola, because they couldn't keep the Coca-Cola going, so what they did was they invented Fanta Orange for the Germans. And that's how Coke was able to keep their profits coming in to Coca-Cola. So when you drink Fanta Orange, that's the Nazi drink. That was created so that Coke could continue making money while millions of people died. When Hitler came to power in 1933, his goal was to dismantle and destroy the Jewish community. This was an enterprise so fast that it required the resources of a computer. But in 1933, there was no computer. What there was was the IBM punch card system, which controlled and stored information based upon the holes that were punched in various rows and columns. Naturally, there was no off-the-shelf software as there is today. Each application was custom designed and the engineer had to personally configure it. Millions of people of all religions and nationalities and characteristics went through the concentration camp system. That's an extraordinary traffic management program that required an IBM system in every railroad direction and an IBM system in every concentration camp. Now, this is a typical prisoner card. There are little boxes where all the information is to be punched in. We compare this information to the code sheet for concentration camps. And here you see Auschwitz is one, Buchenwald two, Dachau is three. Now, what kinds of prisoners were they? They could be a Jehovah's Witness for two, a homosexual for three, communist for six, or a Jew would be eight. Now, what was their status? One was released, two was transferred, four was executed, five was suicide, and six. Code six, Sonderbehandlung, special treatment, meant the gas chamber or sometimes a bullet. They would punch that number in, the material was tabulated, the machines were set, and of course, the punch cards by the millions had to be printed, and they were printed exclusively by IBM, and the profits were recovered just after the war. I really do believe that that particular accusation has been fairly discredited as a serious accusation. That is, the fact that they have used equipment, you know, that is a fact, but how they got it, how much cooperation they got, and any kind of collusion, trying to connect dots that are not connected, I think that's the part that is discredited. Generally, you sell computers, and they're used in a variety of ways, and you always hope they're used in the more positive ways possible. If you ever found out they are used in ways that are not positive, then you would hope that you stop supporting that. But do you always know? Can you always tell? Can you always find out? 
IBM would of course say that it had no control over its German subsidiary. But here on October 9th of 1941, a letter is being written directly to Thomas J. Watson with all sorts of detail about the activities of the uh, German subsidiary. None of these machines were uh, sold. They were all leased by IBM and they had to be serviced on site once a month, even if that was at a concentration camp such as Dachau Buchenwald. This is a typical uh, contract with IBM and the Third Reich which was instituted in, nine, in 1942. It's not with the Dutch subsidiary, it's not with the German subsidiary, it is with the IBM Corporation in New York. You know, as it happens, I know that story. I discussed it more than once with old Mr. Watson, and I was around at the time. I'm not saying that Watson didn't know that the German government used punch cards. He probably did know. After we had very few customers, Watson didn't want to do it. Watson, well, not because he thought it was immoral or not, but because Watson, with a very keen sense of public relations, thought it was risky. <laughs>